now it's time for this hour's news review. Well, a senior member of Iraq's al Najab movement says resistance groups are determined to end the U.S. military presence in their country. The Iraqi resistance, namely the popular mobilization forces, are the ones that made Daesh flee of course in cooperation with others, but it had the biggest role. The resistance kicked out the first American occupation before Daesh. It's now leading calls for confronting the new American occupation that Washington wants to resume in Iraq. Shamari made the comments in an interview with Press TV, which we fully aired in coming days. Well, the Nujaba movement is part of Iraq's popular mobilization units, or the PMU, that fought against the Daesh terrorist group. Calls have been growing for the expulsion of foreign troops from Iraq since the U.S. targeted killing of Iran's top general, Qasem Soleimani, and Iraqi commander, Abu Mahdi al-Mahandas. The two anti-terror icons were assassinated in a drone strike near Baghdad's airport in January of 2020. Days later, Iraqi lawmakers passed a bill requiring the government to call Washington to withdraw American troops groups from the country. I'd like to welcome my guests uh, to this uh, news review out of Ontario, Robert Fantina, author and uh, activist, and out of Beirut, Life Maruf, activist and political commentator. Thank you both for being with us. Let's start it off uh, with Robert. Uh, well, Robert, once again, the PMU is ca calling for uh, the U.S. Uh, military to leave the country. How likely is that going to happen now under a Biden administration, your perspective? It's not very likely to happen at all. The United States plays lip service to supporting uh, self-determination of all nations around the world. If it did so, it would leave Iraq because the government of Iraq has asked it to do so. But that isn't what is of interest to the United States. They're interested in oil, they're interested in power. And so uh, the Biden administration will be very hesitant to withdraw from Iraq. It will give all kinds of excuses about uh, security and helping the people, but the people have said they do not want the U.S. soldiers there and they don't want American presence. But the United States always feels it knows what's best for any country and will force that upon that country. So I don't foresee Biden withdrawing troops from Iraq, which he should definitely do. Lyeth, your take, and, and if uh, what our guests in Kitchener said, that uh, the U.S. will not withdraw troops, but on the other hand, um, we hear members of the PMU saying they must, the American troops must leave Iraq. What exactly does that mean from a security perspective inside of Iraq, in your perspective? Well, we should be expecting an increase in resistance attacks on uh, American troops. We could also presume that uh, there will be a return to more American operations under the guise of uh, a CIA, not military, meaning there may be no increase in American numbers of troops in Iraq, but there will be a return to the use of intelligence assets uh, like uh, Al-Qaeda and ISIS, the Wahhabi Contras that are under control of Saudi Arabia and the United States. And we saw that at the time uh, of Obama, Biden, the first, uh, you know, four years ago before Trump, that was the main uh, activities of the United States is, is using those assets there. Uh, and um, if we remember also at the end of the Obama term before Trump took over, there was an a, a mutiny from the American army against uh, Kerry and Biden when they attempted to withdraw the troops from Syria um, and the Americans attacked the Syrian troops in their Zor, the American soldiers. So we have probably a shift back into the CIA leading the American uh, activities in Syria and Iraq. Robert, what will it take in your perspective then? On the one hand, we have Iraqi people themselves wanting these troops to leave. On the other hand, both of you are saying that's not likely to happen under a Biden administration. So what has to happen here in order for the Iraqi people to reach their goal of not having foreign occupation by American military there? It's very challenging because uh, the U.S. government feels it's a law unto itself. It needn't uh, adhere to international law 
or the desires of the countries in which it is interfering. Uh, and an increase in insur insurgency activity, which your other commentator said is likely, is likely to happen, but that will only stimulate more U.S. troops in Iraq because the U.S. government will say, look, see how un insecure the security situation is there, we need, to, we need to protect them. For this to end, the international community must act, uh, the United Nations must condemn, uh, further condemn U.S. interference in Iraq, and also the U.S. citizenry must work with their elected officials to demand that this interference cease. I don't see that happening anytime soon either because there are so many other pressing issues in the United States, income inequality, the uh, Black Lives Matter movement, which is, is an excellent and growing movement. But there's so many things that are impacting U.S. citizens directly that it's difficult for them to take a broader international view. But that is one of the things that would be required for the U.S. to finally leave Iraq. And Leith, do you see this happening uh, in the short, short term? Or will this be a lengthy process uh, with the Iraqis being able to get the American military to leave their country? Well, I believe in the resistance. And if we see any occupation in history, didn't end with the goodwill of citizens of the occupying power, but it ended with hundreds of and thousands of body bags returning to that occupying country and the citizens uh, crying on those uh, body bags and pushing their government to leave. So the defining thing that will make a difference for shortening the time of American uh, occupation of Iraq is an increase in the number of liquidated American occupying soldiers. And that's uh, what's going to make a difference. And we should be expecting that uh, a uh, rash, ratcheted up uh, uh, resistance is going to happen not only in Iraq, but uh, in Syria too. And on that note, thank both of you for being with us on this uh, news review. Robert Fantina, author and activist out of Kitchener, Ontario. Laith Maruf, uh, activist and political commentator out of Beirut. Thank you, viewers, for staying with us for this news review.